Hey there, fellows. Okay, check this out. It's been a while since we've made something transparent. We've obviously tried an intake manifold that allowed us to observe the atomized mixture, but on top of it we had a regular old carburetor. And since we still have that manifold, we've yet to try doing a transparent carburetor. We have a large slab of plexiglass, one that's gonna allow making something like that. I'd imagine it'll be a very simple piece. All it really needs is... a float chamber that'll be filled with gasoline, and a few channels for the air and the fuel. The air goes through, pulls the gasoline, they mix with each other, and that goes into the engine, making it run. Now, it doesn't sound too complicated, <laughs> but who knows how it's gonna go in practice. Okay, well, enough talk, let's make us that carby and see how it works. We make a transparent carburetor. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So far, this has been going very well. We are currently at this stage, as you can see. It's polished on the outside, you can see all of the channels and everything. Right here we have the channel through which the engine will be pulling everything in. The air, I mean. Also, we'll be feeding fuel into here. This doesn't go all the way through, because this is going to be the float chamber. This is the float itself, which there will be one of. This is a slightly smaller chamber, but I expect it to have more than enough volume. We'll fit the counterpart to this, where we'll have the needle that's going to be pulling the fuel. I mean to say that we'll be attaching the second half. So yeah, let's make the whole thing transparent. In order to get a decent view, I mean, it's already pretty good, and polishing it on the inside might be a challenge. We'll take a crack at it regardless. Looks like we're even past the halfway point. Now it's just a matter of making it fully see-through, fitting it to a car, starting it and seeing how it works. Let's carry on. So look here, things are starting to get pretty interesting. The transparent carburetor is in position on the intake manifold, and what are we looking at? This is the float chamber, which contains gasoline, a float, a needle above it, so all of that is looking good. Also we have this channel through which the air is going to be passing through. Inside of it we have the butterfly valve, the butterfly valve that is going to regulate 
the amount of air coming in, as well as the fuel, of course. And here we have some adjustment screws. As you can see, one of the channels is for fuel, and the other is for air. And that screw is for idle adjustment. It essentially just shifts the position of the butterfly valve, because fully shut it simply won't allow the engine to run. So you can very much see through it, that's all good and well. The intake manifold is the transparent one we made a little while back. We decided to go with it just in case. And now I think we should try starting it. Yeah, yeah, fire it up. There we go! You can clearly see... Take a look at these emulsion tubes. They're carrying the mixture. The vacuum pulls the air through, and that pulls the gasoline through as well. And over here you have a great view of how... That's the mixture right there. Right before the butterfly valve. It transitions to this section. That's the fuel finding its way up from the float chamber into the emulsion tube. From there it mixes with the air, goes into the intake manifold, and is finally sent into the engine. This is cool. It's too bad that over here... We obviously can't see any airflow. But the fuel flow is very apparent. You can clearly see how it finds its way from here into the intake manifold. Some of it stays on the tubes, but you can quite clearly see the mixture. There it is right there. You can tell how fast it's flying into the cylinders. It is going in there fast. Bear in mind that we don't even have an acceleration pump in there. It'd be a very different story if we did have one. But even in the case of this single barrel carburetor, with just the one valve, the engine revs as if... as if we do have an acceleration pump. No delays, no nothing. It's all in the speed at which it's going through this channel, which is quite high. And that's the reason behind the quick response. The reason we are seeing such an effect is that... Well, this is a single barrel carburetor we've made. And as you can see here, you've got a wider diameter, taper and then wider again. That creates a Bernoulli effect. I think that's the right name for it. In that spot, the air accelerates. And we got an excellent view of how the mixture was flying through the carburetor at breakneck speed. It was going through there really fast. Into the manifold. I mean, obviously there's a good amount of vacuum. What with the pistons being 80 millimeters in diameter, factor in the stroke, and that is going to create one hell of a vacuum. So yeah, the mixture was really moving. And importantly, we were able to watch it all happen. Let her rip. Okay, now I suggest we try and conduct a rather interesting experiment. Okay, let me adjust the idle. Alright. That'll do. Okay, so here's what we could do now. For example, we can dial in a bit of extra fuel, and immediately you can see the amount of it increase. Block off a bit of airflow. And have a look at the resulting mixture. Yeah, that is a lot of gasoline. 
You can definitely tell that we're feeding it a lot of gasoline. And I mean a lot of gasoline. Yeah, that's a generous helping. Okay, let's do the inverse now. A bit more air this time. And a bit less fuel. Reduce the gasoline flow. I heard it popping. What do you know? We won't be able to fully block the channel. Immediately we notice that the amount of gasoline being fed has decreased. And the engine sounds different. That's the carburetor fine-tuning right there. Adjusting the air and fuel ratio. There you go. Let's feed a bit more, shall we? The response is just insane. It works great. I am really enjoying this. Yeah, it expelled the gasoline. Was that all of it? No, there is a bit left. Now, if we look at the float chamber, the fuel level has dropped to below the channel. It ran out of fuel and the engine stalled. There we are. The fuel pump is filling the chamber with gasoline. Looking good. And let's start it once more. Sergey. Oh, okay. We seem to have a leak. Yeah, shoot through the heat shrink. Well, guys, we were able to successfully make a see-through carburetor. We observed how it operated, and it was quite interesting. This tube, where we saw the Bernoulli effect in action, that's what accelerated the mixture to speeds where you can't even keep track of it with your eyes. I guess we're gonna have to go over the footage to be able to see it. Anyway, we saw it all. How the fuel and the air were being fed. Together, that formed the mixture. And the fuel was atomized to the point where it turned into dust, pretty much. That is, of course, how it's meant to be. So atomized fuel mixed with air flying into the engine. Honestly, it was pretty mesmerizing to observe. 
Yeah, this was really cool. And it was fairly simple to make. If any of you want to try it out, you would have seen that this really wasn't all that difficult. Yeah, you do need a big chunk of plexiglass, and you'd probably want to have a drilling machine. Though you can also get by with just a regular drill. Go ahead and try it out, surprise your friends, and hopefully you enjoyed this. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later. Still haven't made that transparent engine.